programmable. So we take a model, and then based on that model, people have tried to find out what happens in the memory. So first, we'll try to cover what happened in the amphibian, try to understand the process, then we'll move to the human. Okay. So. And amphibians are, they were actually a very well studied model for the development. They were essentially the first model actually in which they started studying the development. So in amphibian, we have external fertilization. And when we talk about amphibian, we said that if you look at the egg of a frog, the frog egg is kind of, so this is the frog egg. So in the frog egg, the frog egg can easily be divided into two areas. So for example, this drawing line here. So this part actually is very, rich in yolk. We also have yolk in our cell, but not that high. We have seen like in, in chicken that is too heavy in yolk, that's kind of like you see big yolk in the center. But it is like kind of like big part, very rich in yolk. And this has less yolk, although there is yolk, but less yolk. Okay. And the part where is more yolk, this part is called very, this part that is very rich in yolk, that is called vegetal hemisphere. Vegetal hemisphere. Okay. And the part which is less in yolk, that is called animal hemisphere. The nucleus is present right here. So this is the nucleus. Okay. So if there are hemisphere, you can say they should be pole also. So this is called animal pole. And this is called vegetal pole. Okay. Now, the fertilization can take place anywhere in the animal pole. Okay. So fertilization can occur anywhere in animal pole. Now, the point of spermentary, for example, this is the point of spermentary. So point of sperm entry, that actually determines dorsal ventral polarity. Okay. So the point where sperm is going to enter becomes ventral part of body. That means that is belly. Okay, and 180 degree opposite to sperm entry, that become dorsal part, that means spine. So if this is the entry, so think about this part is going to become the belly, and 180 degree from here, right here, this part is going to become the spine, okay? Now, 
So far it is okay? Yes? Okay, now what happened? So when the So, okay. So, right here. So this is. I just draw this as central part right here. It's an arbitrary line. I'm just putting a line there so so that we understand what is happening. Okay. So, what happens? In this side, which is animal hemisphere, okay, so I'll always write here A and B so that we remember. So in the animal hemisphere, there are microtubules arranged there. And those microtubules are kind of haphazardly. So these are microtubules. They are disorganized. So haphazardly arranged, disorganized microtubule. Okay. So when the sperm enter, so right here the sperm enter, we know the sperm never enter, it just throw a nucleus inside, right? So sperm never enters, nucleus and centriole. Okay. So what happened, so it give a centriole, when the centriole enter there, we know the centriole divide in two parts, right? and then it migrate from here to here. So when that process is going to happen, I'm drawing the same thing here, the centriole is there. These disorganized microtubules, what they do, they actually form, they form parallel, parallel, parallel arrays of microtubules. So that form parallel array of microtubules. Okay? Then what happens? Now, this is highly pigmented. This area is highly rich in yolk. Here is less yolk, right? What happened? Right beneath the egg membrane, right beneath the egg membrane, the area here, right here, is so very high yolk, less yolk almost no yolk, okay? Almost no yolk. But that cytoplasm is very dark in color. The cytoplasm here is very dark in color. So this cytoplasm which is here is very dark in color, okay? So, and this is called cortical, cortical cytoplasm, okay? It's basically black, very dark, okay? And beneath this, all the cytoplasm is kind of gray. <coughs> so black, very dark, and then all the rest of the cytoplasm is gray. So what happens? When these microtubules are arranged in the parallel array, these microtubules, when they become parallel array, because they are attached to the centriole, centriole want to divide equally, it kind of like move like this, okay? With that, what happened? With this, the, when these a microtubule from the parallel array, the rotation of cortical cytoplasm takes place. Okay? 
So the cortical cytoplasm, think about this was the center. So the cortical cytoplasm rotate like this, okay? And it rotate in a way that right here, it has moved from here to here. Making sense? So it moves. Now, then when it is moving here, it moves at, so cortical cytoplasm rotates at 30 degrees centigrade. So almost 33 centigrade rotation takes place. Okay? Now, when that happens, so here, at this place, now this is not the dark, right? So this gray cytoplasm which was there is exposed, okay? <coughs> so this area is called gray crescent. Gray crescent. So gray crescent, remember this was the place this was the place where the sperm entry took place, right? So right here is the sperm entry took place. This is directly opposite to the place where the sperm enters. Okay, so gray crescent is formed by the rotation of cortical cytoplasm, 30 degrees <coughs> rotation. And then this gray crescent is formed directly opposite to the sperm entry. Now this gray crescent is very important, very critical. If you remove the gray crescent, the development stops. It, it never develops anything. And we'll, we'll, we'll do more in the next topic. If you take gray crescent from here, put small portion of here to here, you get two heads, all those things. So gray crescent is very critical. The next part of development can only take place if the gray crescent is there. So, Dorsal ventral polarity is determined by <coughs> sperm entry. Head tail, anterior posterior polarity is determined by this gray crescent area. Okay, so what we so this is kind of like what we are saying that we have these parallel arrays. Those parallel arrays are formed. When those parallel arrays are formed, that cause the rotation of outer cortical cytoplasm. And when that happens at 30 degrees centigrade, that exposes a gray area, and that is called gray crescent. And that is directly opposite to the place where the sperm has entered. So far it is okay? So talk to each other, then we'll go further. <coughs>
Okay, everything is okay? Now look here. They're mentioned here. This is the Xenopus egg. So the sperm enter, then you'll see this thing kind of rotating here, this whole thing. So again, dark, right? This is from the top. So you should be able to see there. Can you see that expansion? Again, look here. It happens very quickly. So look here, hit me on this side, okay? Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's what happens here. Then what happens? So that thing has happened. Now then the first division need to take place. Okay, so you have this egg. Now I'm drawing it from the other angle in a way. So this is the egg. So the first region that is going to happen, if, if I kind of rotate this thing like this and try to show you that the first region is going to happen in a way that this great crescent will be divided from the center. Okay, so first region will involve great crescent. So what type of division here takes place? We call it unequal, so unequal radial holoblastic cleavage. So the cell division in the Zygotes, those are called cleavages. We call them cleavages. Okay, we don't call it cell division. Say cleavages. Okay, so the first division is unequal radioblastic cleavage. What does it mean? Holoblastic means it's going to start from here and complete the cleavage, cut the cell completely. Okay, unequal means it will be not exactly center, little bit like this, okay? Radial means I'm going to draw it. So this is kind of like this, okay? Unequal, radial, holoplastic cleavage. Now this cleavage is happening in a way from here to here, from this was your animal core, this is your vegetal core, okay? So this is a equatorial cleavage, equatorial cleavage. Now, remember that this part has more yolk, right? This part has less yolk. So when the cell is dividing, nucleus divide, okay, but then you have to need to develop the, uh, divide the cytoplasm. So the more yolk here kind of impede the cleavage, okay? Because of more yolk, the cleavage is impede here. So here, the cleavage goes fast, fast, and then it starts kind of like getting slow, 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 okay? So while this cleavage is going on, so while this cleavage is going on, it has not completely finished yet. The another cleavage start that is at the right angle to this. For example, should have done. So the first cleavage is starting like this, right? This is the gray crescent, so it's kind of like cutting from the gray crescent right here. This is the gray crescent area, gray crescent. So kind of center of the gray crescent, okay? 
now. So the first is coming like this. So this is like this. So when this cleavage has not been complete, so more is kind of like going through. The second cleavage occur at the right angle of this. Okay. And I should have that also somewhere. Here it is. So the first cleavage is happening like this. While this is happening, a second cleavage occur at the right angle of this. Making sense? So one is happening like this, other happen like this. So let's think about this as a ball. So in a ball, the first cleavage is occurring like this, second is occurring like this. Okay? So the first cleavage is like this, second cleavage is occurring like this. So first cleavage is equatorial, second is equatorial, and look at right angle to the first cleavage. Okay, so that means second is happening like this, cutting like this. So what happens? By the time this cleavage completes, second cleavage is cutting down here, right there, right, this, and this. So in this way, what is going to happen if I'm drawing like this, just think about this. This will be kind of one, two, and say three, and say four cells will be formed like this, right? Because you cut first like this, then like this. Like you cut an apple, like this and like this. You get the four pieces, right? But those four pieces are not separate. They are all there in one egg. Then what happened? So first cleavage occur, then you have a second cleavage occur, I'll just draw it like this. Then the third cleavage occur. The third cleavage is meridional. That means going like this. Okay. And that meridional cleavage that occurs, <coughs> that actually does not occur right here. Does not occur right here. Because right here is more cytoplasm that occur above the equator. So this is your equator. So occur like here. Okay, and that's what we are showing here. So the third cleavage is right here, a little bit up. Here. So this is the first cleavage, right? Second cleavage and third cleavage occur right here. So what that leads to, this is the what that leads to. That cause, because this cleavage has occurred here. So think about what you will have. You will have a cell like this, and a cell like this, right here. These are two, you will have two more because, right? So you cut it like this, four, one, two, and you cut it like this, so total four cells on the top. So these four cell top will be larger. So let me draw it here. One, two, one, two, three, four cells. Okay. On the bottom also you will have one, two, three, four, like this. So on the bottom you will also have four cells. So what is going to happen? You're going to have two large. Now these cells, which are now there, these are now called blastomeres. So you will have four small blastomeres. And you will have large, four large blastomeres. Okay, now this process will continue. 
Now remember, here is more yolk on this side. Here, the cleavage on the, on the vegetal hemisphere will be slow, right? Because you have more yolk. Making sense? Here, the cleavage will be faster because you have less yolk. So what that is going to happen, it will lead to a situation where you will have many, 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 many small cells on the top and small and larger on the bottom. It will be again a ball-like structure, like a soccer ball, right? So this will compose here smaller blastomeres in animal fold, or animal hemisphere, I should say. and larger blastomeres in vegetal, vegetal hemisphere. So far it is okay? Okay. So, this will, now this is, this is an embryo, developing embryo, right? Now, Then what is going to happen? So for example, let me draw this. So this portion, when embryo contain embryo containing sixteen to sixty four cells, like that, is called. Morula. M O R U L A. Okay, it's called Morula. And then what happened? This keep on dividing, keep on dividing. Morula is dividing. So, change to Morula. And then it divides further. At a stage of at 128 cell stage, what happened that blastocele, I will explain you what is that. Blastocele is formed. And what is that? That is happening. Let me. Go from more here, 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 here. <laughs> right. So blastocele is formed if you have this <coughs> this structure like this. What you'll fall, find there are many cells here. Many cells here. There are larger cells on this side. So this is formed. Blastocele is right here, is a cavity. And this structure which is formed is called blastula. We name it, blast, we name it blastocyst in the human. Remember when we were talking about the amyotrophic fertilization? I, I told you that. So this is blastula with a blastocele is formed. Now, these cells, if they're held together, there's a cavity also there, so they should be held together. So when the cells are held together, they bind to each other. And how the cells bind to each other? They bind to each other with the cell adhesion proteins, okay? So, blastocele, is maintained by EP cadherin. EP cadherin is a cell adhesion 
protein. Okay? So, So, so if you if you experimentally remove EPK hair from there, so remove EPK hair, what that is going to lead to? That is going to lead to a structure like this. Structure like this. So this blastocele will be obliterated. Now. So what we are saying, we are saying the development in the amphibian, that happened in human also everywhere. So development start with the cleavage, okay? In case of the cleavage, which occurring in the amphibian is called unequal radial holoblastic cleavage. That cleavage start from an equal pole and proceed towards the vegetal pole. It's an equatorial cleavage. Because you have more yolk in the vegetal pole, that cleavage is impeded in the vegetal pole. So it cleaves faster in the animal pole than slow down here. While that cleavage is still going on, a second equatorial cleavage takes place at the right angle to the first cleavage. Okay? So that cleavage generates total four blastomeres. Then the third cleavage occurs. Third cleavage is actually above the central part. It's a meridional cleavage above the equator. And that is above the equator because you have more yolk here, okay? And that leads to total eight blastomere. Two blastomeres will be, or four blastomeres, which will be smaller, will be on the top. We call it four smaller blastomere. And then you will have four larger blastomere. Now this cleavage will keep on continuing, continuing going. You reach at a stage where you have 16 to 64 cells, that is called morula. And once that goes past 128 cell stage, a change takes place in the embryo, and that change is creation of blastocyl. And then this blastocyl is created, this stage is called blastula. But here, what it is doing, it is separating these cells of vegetal pole or vegetal hemisphere from the animal hemisphere. They are separated from each other. Okay? So now, this is a blastula formation. And we said that this blastocell and whole blastula structure is maintained because of cadherins, and specifically EP cadherin, which is there. If the EP cadherin is not there, then this blastocyl and this blastula structure gets obliterated and you don't have that structure there. Now look at this thing for, the, for a minute and then you can discuss it. And you can see how the cleavage is taking place. Each division normally takes about 30 minutes. So that's the next step. But you can see here on the top, they were all smaller, very smaller. Micromeres and on the base they were megameres. Okay, so everything is clear here. So just talk to each other for a few minutes, then we'll go further. <coughs> Thank you. 
so he does an unequal radio hollow blaster cleavage. Um, and then it, the first one slows and it reaches the virtual hemisphere because there's more yield. Um, while it's still going, another cleavage begins 90 degrees from the first Yeah. <coughs> and then the other cleavage begins while the first one's still finishing. Um, 90 degrees to the first one. And then the third, a meridonal one, which is just above the um, hemisphere, halfway point, whatever, occurs. And then that, like, <laughs> Which are called blaster mirrors. Um, and then that leads to a lot of small cells on the top that divide and less on the bottom that divide. And I know that they, there's less on the bottom just because it takes so long to complete. Uh, yeah, because they take a lot of time. Um, and the more you are, more, more you are? In the embryo, it implants the same 24 cells. As it keeps dividing at 128, though, the blaster seals one. Um, and then when the cavity that forms at the blaster it separates the cells of the hemisphere. And the adhesive part of it is maintained by the UP cavity. Blastocyst. And the whole thing is the blastula. Yep. Uh, uh, so at 128. It starts the formation. Does the morula change to the blastula? Yep. So the blastula. One, is, everything is happening. One is changing to other, right? If morula doesn't change to blastula, then it will remain as morula. You will not get. You will not get any organism. So the cavity is the blastocyst cell? Say again? Yeah. The cavity is the blastocyst cell? The cavity is blastocyst. And the blastula is just the whole cell. Blastocyst. The blastula is not the whole cell. There are thousands, of, hundreds of cells. I mean, like the whole, like. Whole embryo. Yeah. Embryo, in the, this is embryo. Oh, individual ones are blastula. No. <laughs> Individuals in the cells. Right. The cavity is the blastocyst. This is a blastula. Right. The whole unit. Yes. This embryo okay. is now called blastula. It started with zygote, right? Zygote start dividing. You reach a stage that is called morula. That morula changes to blastula. Making sense? Yeah. And uh, the process of formation of blastula from fertilized egg is called blastulation. Wait, say again. Process. The process of formation of blastula from fertilized egg is blastulation. Actually, right here, looking at the blastula, very early stage, we can make a fake map. Fate map is construction of maps. Now we can make a map. And what that map is doing? Representing the future of the cells of the embryo. That can be in any stage, okay? But at this stage, we can make a fate map and we can tell which cell is going to become what in the future, okay? So if we make this thing, 
So these cells which are right here, right here, they are going to make the future epidermis ectoderm. Epidermis ectoderm. Epidermis is all our skin. So they are going to cover the whole body. These cells are going to make all the skin there. And the cells opposite, like here was the sperm entry, right? These cells, so cells opposite to sperm entry. They are going to make neural ectoderm. So all our nervous system is going to come from there. Okay, so that's why I told you that that is the area which is the great listening, right? So that is so that's going to make that. And this area right here, this is going to make not a cord, and what is not a cord? We'll, we'll learn in a way in a minute. Okay, not in a minute. We'll learn slowly. Okay, mm -hmm. not a cord and head mesoderm and somites. Somites are different parts which are going to give you different type of muscles. Okay. They're going to make somites. And then cells right here, they are going to give you heart. Okay. And then all those cells which are right here, all the cells which are right here, all the cells which are right here, they are going to give you endoderm. Endoderm is your gut and all your visceral organs are endoderm. So you can say gut, everything will be from there. <coughs> and then cells here, they are going to give you Lateral plate. Lateral plate. Mesoderm. Okay. So, well, lateral plate mesoderm will be like kind of connective tissues and all those things. That's what I mean. We we'll talk about those later once we are there. So, that means. The blastula structure right here, we have that information where what these cells are going to respond. So we can create those fake maps. So what happens after this? Okay, the process from blastula to next stage is from blastula changes to is going to change to gastrula blastula is going to change to gastrula and that process of changing <coughs> blastula to gastrula is called gastrulation and remember what we are saying this is blastula, right? We are saying these cells are going to make you gut. Think about what we are. We are tube, right? We are, we are a tube. Our body is a tube. And everything is made around that tube. So it means we have to make those tubes in the body. So how we we'll make the tube? We are saying there is a covering of that tube that covering is epidermis, skin. So that means that this part of the blastula, these cells should cover the whole embryo, right? And we are saying this part is going to become the gut. Gut is the center tube. So these cells should move inside somewhere. And then we are saying, this is skin. We are saying all this part is a kind of a mesoderm. Mesoderm is muscle, bone, all those things. So those are not outside, 
They are not in the gut, so gut is in the center, so they should be in the middle, right? So that means we have to make all those movements and how those movements are going to take place to make, set those cells in a way that you have cells which are going to form skin, standing out, then cells which are going to form muscles and bone in the middle, cells which are going to form gut should be in the center of the body. So that process will be achieved during the process of gastrulation. Just look at this movie and then we'll talk about why blastocele is important, how those things happen, right? So just look at this for a second further. So you see that I told you that cell should move in, right? Look here, what, what's going to happen now? Uh, play, uh, pay close attention right here on the top. And actually you will not be able to miss it if you see. Look here. The blastula develops into a gastrula. Can you see that? That everything that was here outside Things have started the moving in. develops into a gastrula. Neural folds develop and fuse to form the spinal cord and brain. So we are talking only from here to the blastula develops into a gastrula. Here to here first. Okay. Next part neurotube was formation of brain. We'll come later there. Okay. So then we are saying everything moves in. This exactly same thing happened in the humans. There is no difference there. Right? So then we are saying gastrulation is taking place. Then we said this blastocele is formed. Why blastocele is formed? What is the reason? Things are moving inside. They can move inside only if there is space. Right? So, so blastocele, why blastocele? There are two purposes. Number one, this is responsible for the migration of cells during Gastrulation, so that cell can move in. It's responsible for that. Number one. Number two. I told you these cells are going to become ectoderm, right? This is epidermis, skin. This part is going, going to give neural ectoderm, which is going to give brain, spinal cord, and all those things. This area, this blastocele is separating these cells from interacting with the ectoderm, right? If you do an experiment, you basically cut this thing and you put all the cells, which is the roof of the blastocele, right? Bring them in contact with the cell so these are the roof of the blastocele. Bring them in contact right here to this cell, right? These are the endoderm cell. They are going to become endoderm, they are not yet endoderm, but what you call that cell? The cell at the bottom of the Blastocele, I'll, I'll use the term cell at bottom of the cells at 
bottom of blastocele. What happened if you do that? All these cells, they become these cells change to mesoderm. Mesoderm means they are going to give you muscle and bone. These cells were supposed to give you skin and the nervous system. Right? Making sense what I'm saying? So that means this blastocele, what it does, it prevents cell beneath it, these cells, from interacting prematurely and the time will come when they will interact, when the need will come, it is not required now. Prematurely with the cells above it. So it kind of like stop it, that they cannot interact prematurely, otherwise you will not get skin or nervous system, right? So, but the cells here, remember here, I said these cells are going to give later plate mesoderm, they, they, because they are in contact, right? I told cell here had mesoderm and smite. So the cell which are in contact, they are changing to into mesoderm. But the cell which are not in contact, they are going to change into ectoderm and ectoderm, skin and nervous system. Making sense or no? So talk to each other for a minute or so, so that make sure that you assimilate things, then we go further. Any confusion here? You guys are okay? You're okay. Okay, now. <coughs> Blastula has to change to gastrula, right? So something happened before blastula is going to change to gastrula. Means you have to prepare for all those moments, right? So that is called mid blastula. Transition. Mid blastula transition. Mid blastula transition is essentially preparing for gastrulation. Preparing for gastrulation. And what is happening there? We are seeing preparing for gastrulation. One thing it does is activation, activation of zygotic genes. So in early cravings, only a few nuclear genes 
are transcribed. Only a few nuclear genes are transcribed. And the nuclear genes, nuclear genes are activated by the 12th cycle. So to first try to reason, essentially there is no nuclear gene activated. We know there are many mRNA there, right? In the egg, those mRNA make proteins and those were utilized there. Now at that time, at the 12th cycle is done, at that time, then what happened? Then mid blastula transition occurred. Up to 12, nothing happens. Now, what happened during that process? Number one, so far, remember we said division occurring, everything is coming from the mother mRNA. So, all the cell will essentially express the, not express, but translate the same gene because no new transcription has taken place yet. But translation is taking place, right? But at this stage, what happened, the first thing is, that different genes begin to transcribe in different cells. So each cell now has its own gene transcription, right? Earlier it was not. Then second thing is that cell cycle acquire gap phase. Before that, it was boom, 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 cell division taking place. Then this big gap starting up. And then we said, what was gastrulation? The movement of blastomeres, right? So that means the blastomere should acquire that capability to become mobile, right? So they can move. So third thing happened, that blastomeres acquire capability to be motile so they can move. Now, it is believed, what is believed, that some, so it is believed that some factors from cytosol are absorbed by the newly formed chromatin. And when that happened, that lead to mid blastula transition. So if you alter, if you alter the cytoplasmic to chromatin ratio, you can alter the mid blastula transition timing. So here is the important thing. When I'm saying that some factors from the chromatin are absorbed, some factor from cytosol are absorbed by chromatin, it means that there might be some enzymes which are interacting there. That means the epigenetic changes are going to take place. And those epigenetic changes are going to cause differential gene transcription. And when that is going to happen, that means new proteins are going to be made. Those will alter the cell cycle and those will provide the capability of these cells to move. Making sense so far? Now we are saying how, how that is going to happen.
So how that is going to happen? That is due to, because some factors are absorbed by chromatin. So that means we will have chromatin modifications. Chromatin modification. Number one. It means that if you are saying new transcription is going to take place, right? Transcription can take place only if the transcription factor can bind to the promoter. It can bind to promoter only if it is open. How it is open? Usually promoters which are not expressing, they're not transcribed, they're methylated, okay? So that means what we need that number one, certain promoters are demethylated. Certain promoters need to be demethylated. And second thing what happened, this is the modification taking place at the DNA level, right? But when we talk about chromatin, we don't say only DNA, we talk about the histone which are, to which the DNA is wrapped. Means even if this is demethylated, if it is tightly wrapped to histone, the polymerase cannot enter, right? So then you need to have that thing demethylated. So what happened that, so histone, methylation is important. Here, demethylation is important. So then histone methylation is going to, going to take place. What is going to happen? Methylation of lysine 4 in histone 3. That will be a, actually trimethylation. Three methyl group will be available. Okay, so trimethylated lysine is going to form. So we'll add fourth lysine in histone three. And we have covered that a lot in genetics, right? So I don't know whether you guys know it, know it but I know we have covered that in genetics a lot. So I'm not going in that process, how that and what is that. But for this, just remember that we have trimethylation of lysine four in the histone three. What that does, that opens the chromatin completely. So we are having methyl we are having modification at two places. Number one, we are having modification at DNA level modification. And second is we're having nucleosome level modification. You know nucleosome is H1, S2. S2A, S2B, S3, S4, four are there, right? So they are there. So that is causing that modification. Now, so that means what is happening that these genes are being open for the transcription. So transcription factor from, from where they are coming. So transcription factors are coming from mRNA in the egg itself. It is already present there. Transcription factors are already there. So they were in the maternal, right? Those are maternal. So now, therefore, maternally present transcription factor binds to promoter of newly activated chromatin. So this chromatin is activated, right? Transcription factor were made by the mRNA that was already present in the egg. So now those transcription factor can go and bind to these chromatin which were modified. One example is wedge T. Wedge T 
is a protein, and this protein acts as a transcription factor. What it does, so this was your blastula right here. This was the blastocele, okay? Which T is made in this cell. What VST does, oh, we are out of time, but even more than two, but that's okay. What VST does, VST makes these cells endoderm. So VST is transcription vector. So it means it is activating the gene which are going to make this portion endoderm. And this is telling these cells to secrete something, to secrete something on the cells above those, cells above those. And make these cells which are above those change themselves into the mesoderm. Okay, so we are saying very quickly. Yeah. We don't have much time. But it's a dual time, okay? We have a pep rally, and I have to check people in. Okay. We have a class here? We have pep rally. For all oh, it's homecoming week. And I okay, check okay. People in. Give me one minute. <laughs> so that you, this thing is, I can go away, so you can make it shoot. So we are saying that mid-blastular transition takes place. When the mid-blastular transition takes place, two important things are happening. Three important things are happening. Number one is that you have new genes are going to be transcribed, which will be nuclear genes. Second thing is going to happen that you will have your cells will gain, uh, cell division are taking place very fast, now you will have a gap in those. And third is going to happen that your blastomeres will become motile so they can move in. And we are saying that is happening because you need the activation of the chromatin. And that happened because of the epigenetic modification. And we are saying that DNA is demethylated, especially at the area where the promoters are. Transcription factors were already made by maternal MRA. Then the second thing we are saying that, nucle that the nucleosomes, they are also modified. And they're modified because lysine 4, which is in the histone 3, lysine at the number 4, is trimethylated. That opens up the chromatin where this transcription factor can bind and make the new proteins. So one of the transcription factors we are saying is VEGT, which is present in these cells, okay? And this, when this is made, they start the expression of the gene, which are telling these cells you have to become endoderm. And then under the influence of this VEGT, these cells start secreting a factor that will go above two cells above this and makes them mesoderm, right? That's the reason we said when this cell will come in contact with this, they'll become mesoderm. That is the reason, because the VST transcription factors. We'll, we'll talk further about all these things. So 